Pastor Bayo Fadugba. <laughs> I still can't get over all that you shared about two, three weeks ago. The Lord bless you, sir. Um, can you please give us your thoughts on the subject of our discussion today? Um, equipping the saints and engaging the congregation post COVID-19. Um, your wealth of wisdom is much needed at this critical time. Over to you, Pastor Bayo Fadugba. You have the floor for 30 minutes. Thank you so much, um, Pastor Tui. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor Bayo. Thank you so much. Uh, I, um, I was taking notes and, uh, by God's grace, maybe I'll ask for your outline later, Pastor. Uh, please, so that, cause I didn't think of some of the, the, the dimensions you thought of. Um, thank you so much, sir. That was a blessing. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'd also like to start by, um, acknowledging, uh, the chairman and the planning committee and everybody that puts this convention together. Uh, thank you so much for a great job and thank you for this opportunity to uh, not just um, participate, but also uh, to share and also be a part of the panel. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I'll, I'll look at the, the topic. Uh, um, um, Pastor Bayer, um, uh took uh, the topic from the leadership perspective um, because I felt he was talking to me directly as a pastor, as a leader. Uh, listening to him. So, um, I would, um, take it, uh, should I say beyond just, um, the leaders to, uh, the lay people, uh, the members of our church and also, um, the young people in our church. Uh, the topic again is after COVID-19, what next? How do we equip and engage the church? So I'm going to focus on the church part of it. Uh, because I assume that uh, we're certainly not talking about um, uh, general uh, COVID ideas here. We're, we're, we're relating this topic to the church. And the question that comes to mind to answer this um, big challenge that's confronting all of us is what's the eternal plan and the purpose of God in all this? Pre-COVID crisis, what's the plan of In COVID crisis, are we reacting the right way along the lines of the fulfillment of the purpose and the plan of God and the will of God during this crisis? Now, post-COVID crisis, what exactly does heaven expect from all of us? I'll take my text from the book of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. I'm reading the King James Version of the Bible. It says, for unto us a child is born. Please, if you can, um, let's highlight or underline unto us. It says, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Please let's highlight or underline the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Verse 7. Of the increase of his government, let's highlight increase of his government. And peace, there shall be no end. Let's highlight peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. I lighted the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Let me take each of, let me break down each of those highlighted or underlined portion in my Note here, we're talking about the purpose of COVID-19 so that we can apply ourselves to wisdom and be able to execute and achieve heaven's plan post-COVID. So let's start with unto us. 
The Bible said, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Talking about Jesus Christ. It means, or it is interpreted to mean that for our benefit, for such a time as this, Jesus Christ was given to us. Jesus Christ was born. Jesus Christ went to the cross, gave his life for you and I. For our benefit for such a time as this is the anchor of our soul. Is the hope. The Bible speaks of Jesus Christ in us, the hope of glory. Is the hope in the season of total hopelessness. In the place where there is total chaos. Governments are confused. Our president is confused. People, because there is no precedent to where we found ourselves. But the Bible says, Jesus Christ in us is the hope of glory. He is the anchor. He is our strength. And for such a time as this is why we're called Christians. Number two, the government shall be upon his shoulder. The government here can, because I, 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 um, I, I, I study government. We can be, we can speak of the executive arm of government. It squarely rests on Christ. The legislative, the judicial arm of government and every form of governmental, societal governmental structure is inched on his shoulder. On him rests the responsibility, the wisdom, the application of wisdom that will cause leadership to excel at such a time as this. The Bible says the government shall be upon his shoulders. Governance and leadership is his responsibility. And we can draw wisdom. We can draw strength. We can draw grace from him in any capacity of leadership. At such a time as this, as believers. Number three. The Bible says of the increase of this government, of his government, there shall be no end. It means pre-COVID crisis, that government must increase. That kingdom must continue to increase. In COVID crisis, that government must continue to increase. Post-COVID crisis, that government, that kingdom, the kingdom of our God, must continue to increase because the Bible says of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. It presupposes, church, that the ultimate plan and purpose of God, the desire and the expectation of God is that even at such a low moment, a moment of confusion like this, heaven expects that the kingdom of God shall continue to increase. The kingdom of God shall not just be maintained, not just recede, but that the kingdom shall continue to increase. Pastor Bayer said in his opening, uh, in his, um, in his, um, exhortation that people are so fearful now, they are willing to accept Christ. The problem is if we do not know the purpose of God for the crisis, we will not make ourselves available to be used of God to increase his kingdom. Because if everybody is running away and we are also taking cover, we will just act like them and there will be, the kingdom of God will not be increased. The Bible says the next thing, the Bible said, the increase of his peace, there shall be no end. Church, whether pre-COVID, in COVID crisis or whatever crisis in life or post-crisis, heaven's purpose Heaven's desire is that his peace shall continue to increase. Now, this is my understanding, church. It means for us as believers, we must have an understanding that the thicker the problem, the stronger the wall of protection that is around you and I. The greater the dimension of the crisis the greater the dimension of the supernatural enablement around us. Now, when we have that understanding and we're dwelling in the midst of that peace, 
we will be able to do exploits, not just pre-COVID, but in COVID crisis and any other crisis of life and post whatever challenge life throws at us, particularly COVID crisis. And the Bible completes that scripture by saying, my last highlighted portion, it says, and the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. It means church. And the Lord God Almighty himself, he will do this for us. If we can only connect with him, it's like heaven is waiting. It's like heaven is ready. It's like heaven is excited about a moment like this. When everybody is afraid, people are taking cover, they are looking for solution. There's no cure for this. But just as the doctors are crying, the nurses are afraid, the believers and the evangelists and people gifted with the grace for healing, they are also taking cover. The Bible says, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. He will, he wants to use us to increase his kingdom because the ultimate plan of God is not that the kingdom of God will decrease even with COVID. The ultimate plan of God is that is not that the kingdom of God would recede. The ultimate plan of God is that it will increase. In COVID crisis and post-COVID crisis. And one thing we are sure of is that the peace that is in God is guaranteed even in the midst of this pandemic. And the reason why the Bible speaks of increase and immediately after I said the, of the increase of his government, of his kingdom, one version says, and peace, because without peace in the middle of a pandemic, there's no way anybody can plan for increase without peace. There is no way anybody can experience kingdom growth, kingdom increase without having our anchor firmly rooted in the peace that is in Christ Jesus. The Bible speaking in the book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15. I'll read the NIV version. It says, this is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. It says, in repentance and rest is your salvation. In repentance and rest is your salvation. I think one of the first things we need to do, church, we've wasted and some of us, we've lost three months some a few weeks maybe we need to come to terms with the reality that god where did i miss it what exactly is your plan and your purpose number two we need to rest in him and that's where the covenant of peace comes in and it now says in quietness and trust let us trust god that the God we serve, he would see us through. We did a survey in our church, uh, I think about a month ago, um, asking to, amongst all the volunteers and the workers in the church, how many people would be willing to come and serve. We, we had all those things, well, not all, some of the things Pastor Bio mentioned, you know, we had put them in place, but UV rays, to sanitize, we we went overboard. We were we had five thousand masks for everybody. We thought people would be excited. Church, seventy seven percent of the workforce of the church said they are not coming to church because they are not comfortable. The only reason why they will not come to church because they are not comfortable it's because. For me, that indicated the level of our trust in God. But the Bible says, in quietness and trust is our strength. 
And he now concluded that Isaiah 30, verse 15. He said, just like it is in the world today. He said, but you would have none of it. You would not believe in it. You would not trust in the capacity of the God of heaven to keep us and to preserve us. We listen to CNN. We listen to Fox. We listen to MSNBC. We listen to all the news channels. We are inundated on a regular basis with negative news on a second per second basis. And we've believed those negative news. It's created a sense of fear within us such that, as it were, we have been immobilized. The purpose and the plan of God for increase at this time has been pushed to the back end. We're all looking at how to survive COVID. No, God does not want us to survive COVID. He wants us to excel in the midst of COVID. The peace of God in crisis naturally should produce growth and maturity within us. And it should also be reflected externally such that that peace that we have in God, it influences and affects positively the people around us so that much more than the time of peace, they trust in our God. The Bible speaking in the book of James chapter 1, James chapter 1 verse 2 to 3, I'm reading the New Living Translation. It says, dear brothers and sisters, talking to the church, he said, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity. May we not waste this crisis in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, dear brothers and sisters, when trouble of any kind, that means it covers COVID-19 trouble, consider it an opportunity for a great outstanding testimony. For you know that when your faith is tested, when your faith is stretched, your maturity grows. Your endurance grows. Consider it an opportunity. Consider this crisis an opportunity for growth, an opportunity to increase our capacity for kingdom influence. Not for self-aggrandizement, not for self-promotion, Oh, I'm better than you. Oh, I'm better than the other church down the road. Oh, I'm holier than you. That's why COVID didn't come next to me. Oh, I'm good. You are bad. That's not the plan and the purpose of God. He said, when our faith is tested, when our faith is stretched, let's consider it an opportunity for outstanding testimony for the kingdom. I remember Daddy Gio's um, story. You know, uh, Daddy Gio gave an example. Um, I, I, I lived in Port Harcourt. I actually came to Houston from Port Harcourt. Uh, so when Daddy Gio gave the example of his a trip he made to Port Harcourt, Abonima, you know, um, and he said, because, I mean, if um, for those uh, that do not know Nigeria or I've not been to Port Harcourt in Nigeria. Now, to get to Abonima, you have to go through water. So, uh, Daddy Gio said boat, but really, there's really, well, I don't know whether they have boats now, but then there were, there were no boats. It's really a, a, a canoe. You have to, no matter who you are, uh, uh, for me, I was practicing as an attorney. So, you know, all of us in our wigs and gowns, we get into canoes you know, to get to Abonima, through Abonima Wharf. And Daddy Gio said, because canoes are always, if anything, just a little wind, the canoes would capsize and people that can't swim, they die. They give everybody these life jackets, but at times those life jackets are so uh, weather-beaten that it can't uh, keep anybody afloat. 
in the midst of um, a crisis. But that Gio said, you know, because several canoes are just um, are just sank and people are just died, so people were afraid to go with him. So one young man came to him, and the young man said that, Daddy, on one condition, I'll go with you if you allow me ride in your boat, because I know that if you are in the boat, the boat cannot sink. Now, church, if Daddy Gio was visibly panicking, there is no way that man would say, let me be in your boat. The lesson I'm trying to bring out is this. We cannot influence people positively. We cannot increase the kingdom of God if we are panicking like the way they, the same way they are panicking. And there are a few classic reactions to COVID-19 crisis that I'd like to share before I close. In 4 Samuel chapter 30, I'll take my text uh, for the reaction, how David reacted. In 4 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 to 3, you know, David reacted to a major, major crisis in his life at Ziklag. It was the same place where, for the first time in his life, the mighty men of David said they contemplated killing him. These were the same people that were willing to give their lives to get him a cup of water from the fountains and the wells of Jerusalem. But because they were, it's like they were separated from their loved ones. For the first time, they experienced what they had not experienced at the battlefield. I want us to learn from the reaction so that this, should I say, would be an assessment of the classic reaction to COVID-19 crisis and whatever crisis we face in life. Number one is total lockdown. The plan of the devil is to compel us to give up on our dreams. The plan of the devil is to compel us to give up on our ministry. The plan of the devil is for someone to give up because of depression, loneliness. And he does this by cutting us off our necessary supply and essential things we need in life. For David and his men, their backbone was their wives and their children. And the Amalekites cut them off for the first time. It's like the enemy that had been looking for an opening. They had tried several angles. And when they hit the backbone of David and those mighty men, everything fell apart. Now, we're told to social distance because of COVID, but social distancing must not lead to isolation. Every one of us must not allow us to be cut off from the fellowship of the brethren, from the necessary support we need. And I can go on talking about support. There are people that have been cut off from their destiny helpers in life. There are people that have been cut off from the necessary people they need that holds the key to their next level in life. There are people that have been cut off because of one crisis, one demonically orchestrated strategic plan. The enemy doesn't come at us from the frontal view any longer. He is strategic in his attack to decapitate a believer, to pull down our defenses and pull down the structure that's, that's, that, that supports us. Number two, the classic reaction to a crisis is fear. I'll define fear as fantasized experiences appearing real. Now, I say fantasized, not false experiences, because that's what we were told in Bible college. It's fantasized experiences, things you built up because you've listened to the news 
You've listened to statistics of people that die on a daily basis. It's in fact CNN and um, all these other news channels. They had it permanently pasted on their screen. The number of people that died, and most of them omitted the number of people that survived. And that builds a negative fantasy in our head. Some people are already think maybe you suddenly had cold. Everybody has cold. Your mind starts fantasizing that you already caught COVID. You start thinking of strange things. Now fear comes in. And you begin to, we begin to show symptoms of COVID even though you don't have it. Fantasized experiences appearing real. Medically, it said that there is a place where somebody, a woman can fantasize that she's pregnant and her tummy would actually start growing like she's pregnant, but there's nothing inside it. Fear. It's okay to experience some form of fear. It's actually normal. It's natural. But please, fear should be a signal for us to be alert and be cautious. It must not be an instrument that will immobilize us and keep us on the same spot. Number three, because my time is almost up. The next classic reaction to crisis is indifference. Some believers believe that COVID-19 is all political grand uh, propaganda. And may I say, not planning to change is a sign of indifference. We can no longer run church. We can no longer live our lives the way we used to live pre-COVID. Not studying a relevant course in school or running your business the same way you ran your business pre-COVID is a sign of indifference. And number four, classic reaction to a crisis is innovation. I'll talk about the A, B, C, D, and E of innovation post-COVID. The A represents accept the new normal. Don't live in denial. Don't live in the old age. Accept the new normal. B, be ahead of the curve. Don't just keep keep up with the curve. Now, some people are not even, they don't even recognize the curve at all. So it's not enough for you to keep in step with the curve. You must be ahead of the curve. C mean represents connect with the right people so you can learn. The Bible speaks of iron sharpening iron. Don't go connect with wood because wood cannot sharpen iron. Connect with the right people so you can be sharpened. And D represents develop a new structure to sustain a new direction. New wine must be put in new wine skin. It's a new world. It's a new normal. And there must be a new structure to undergird the new direction. And E represents embrace technology. Embrace technology. Invest in it. It can be overemphasized. Because this is the time to engage the innovation of the young generation. If you are 40 years, you're 40 years old and above, you're already old. In fact, maybe if you are 30, you are in the middle ages of being old. We need to engage the innovation of the young generation, the 16, 17, 18, 21 year olds. Because what we need for the next level, what we need for the next phase, what we are looking for is the world they live in on a daily basis. They are on their phone on a daily basis. It comes natural to them. They don't even think about it. May God help us. May God grant us the grace to apply these things and much more. And may God grant every one of us the ability to be instruments in the hand of God, to grow the kingdom of God, to connect with one another and form a formidable force 
such that we will repel darkness and the light of the kingdom of God would, would, would radiate even much more brighter than ever before in these dark times in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for the opportunity and God bless. Pastor, Pastor Tony, over to you. It's 29 minutes, 48 seconds. Thank you so much, Pastor Bayo Fadugba, for the great exposition of the scripture. Um, it was almost like I was reading that um, scripture for the first time. The way you actually dealt with it, um, I'm thoroughly blessed, and I'm sure our audience are as well. Thank you so much for the powerful word of encouragement to rest in God and not to fear, not to panic not to give up, especially not to isolate um, at this very critical time. The Lord bless you and increase you more and more in Jesus' mighty name. Um, From both of our speakers, we have heard two different perspectives to approaching the subject. Um, At this time, um, we will open the floor to questions um, from our audience. Um, Like I said at the beginning, please use the chat feature to submit your questions so that um, our panelists can um, thoroughly look at them and move us forward. All right, I have a question here. And I'm get, I'm just going to go ahead and read. Now that the church has a greater online presence, what are the potential legal or copyright implications that the church may face? How do we tackle such implications? Um, I'm going to throw this out to Pastor Bayo Adewole. Can you please help us with that, sir? Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, thank God for Pastor Bio's uh, exhortation on equipping the saints and uh, really thank God for the word. Uh, on the question, we have to be careful and uh, so that we are not uh, infringing on copyright law. I would just want to say that as much as possible, let's be original and whenever we are using materials, let's take time to either get in touch with the proprietors of the of the information or give credit to them but even using using it at all i think you need to get in touch with them before you can use their material because hey this is america people will sue you and you want to be you want to guide a case that uh but let's try as much as possible to originate that to be original there's nothing new under the sun that you cannot uh come up with something, and you can't believe it, the kind of creativity and innovation that we've learned throughout, I mean, in churches now, that things that you think your people cannot do, or our brethren cannot do, people are ordinary people, so I believe we just need to challenge ourselves, this is what we want to do, and I believe by this of God, God of creativity, who has given, every, we have creativity DNA, so we'll be able to come up with it. So don't steal anybody there, but you can, of course, learn from what you are doing. If you want to use it, please, as much as possible, take credit. Particularly, you are going to use it on the media. And, uh, with me, we all, you mean, we, uh, use phrases that we have. We can remember, okay, this is not my word, but hey, I learned this. And so, let's, let's give credit where credit is due. And as much as possible, if you're going to use it on media, please, you want to ensure you uh, take proper precaution, take a, a request for permission and talk to them. Thank you so much, Pastor Bayo Adewale. Um, I'm going to throw the same question out to Pastor Bayo Faduba. Um, let's just hear your own perspective on that question as well. Um, now that the church has a greater online presence, we are now a church without walls. What are the legal or potential um, copyright implications that we may face post-COVID-19? 
um, we are not a small church anymore. We are speaking and ministering to the entire world. Um, let's hear your perspective, sir, Pastor Faduba. Thank you, Pastor Tony. Um, um, I think the same thing uh, Pastor Bayer said, I would um, align myself with that. Um, uh, we should no longer uh, just um, copy songs, you know, uh, and sing and assume that um, it's okay. Nobody would notice. Uh, paying those um, um, for softwares and getting permits is no longer um, an option. Now, there are some of those websites that actually would shut you down. Um, immediately, they notice that you, you, uh, you don't have the rights or the permits to do some of those songs and do some of the things we want to do. I mean, one of our uh, church empowerment sessions was actually shut down by YouTube. Uh, we're still trying to find out why. So um, I, I need us uh, to just do due diligence ahead of time. Now, the second thing I want to talk about um, uh, with respect to that is now that church is going global on the Internet, the church, like I said, we need to be ahead of the curve. Now, being ahead of the curve means we're not just running our services on YouTube, on uh, Instagram. Now, all these platforms are great, but I give you just some with some with some time now. They may come up with some strange policies. They don't want the name of Jesus. You understand? They may come up with some just some stringent policies that will keep the church out of those platforms. So ahead of time, the church must invest in a platform that is owned by the church. For example, the church website. We must invest in those things because you have the, you would have control. And if you're already shooting your service to a million people, you've, you've, um, you've drawn attention to your website rather than to your YouTube page or your Instagram page or your Facebook page. If it's from your website, there's, if they say don't run whatever on YouTube any longer, maybe your sermon is too hard. You know that you can still run your service, run your sermon the way you want to run it without infringing on their laws on your own website. So I'm going to suggest that we all start investing on our own channels, on our own developing our own streaming um, platforms. And let's not wait until they shut us down before we make all these plans. Thank you so much, Pastor Tony. Awesome contribution. Thank you so much for your counsel. I'm sure our audience are taking notes. Um, moving right along, I have a question here from one of our viewers. Um, the question is, if a member of the church who is above 65 years of age decides to church, what should the church do? Should you, should the church ask her or him to return home or stay? How do we handle this in light of all that we have um, heard this morning? Um, Pastor Bayo, um, Adewale. <laughs> Like uh, I said earlier, the the 60, 65 and above, uh, unfortunately, they're the most uh, affected and they're the uh, uh, vulnerable among our men. There must be a way, we must find a way to lovingly uh, educate and approach them again and to ensure that we also cater for their needs. Uh, for me, I will advise them not to come to church now uh, until the uh, 
at least for us, they can't come because of where we are as a church. So I believe each church should be able to uh, learn from whatever the what state they are, what the state is saying, what the city, what number uh, of people. Like the children too can come. So they are not the only one being. Uh, they, it's all about discrimination. It's just about being uh, planning wisely, cautiously, and safely. Because at the end of the day, it is the safety, health, well-being of every member of the church that we must be. So they shouldn't see it as if we are discriminating against it. But our children can come now. So, and they should also learn from that. And that shouldn't be a problem, really, talking to them. But the way we approach it, and we also must develop things that we can also uh, appeal to them. We're talking about how to engage uh, congregation, so and their part and parcel of the congregations. Thank you so much, Pastor Adewale. Thank you so much, Pastor Adewale. God bless you, sir, for that um, counsel. Um, moving along, I still have other questions. I have one here, and I'm just going to read. It says, "Is it viable for a pastor that works?" night shift including weekends to run multiple services on Sundays knowing that he or she just came from work on Sunday and he or she will be going back to work <laughs> that Sunday um, Pastor Faduba please can you help us out with this question oh, thank you Pastor Tony I I think Every situation has to uh, be taken on its merits. Um, it's going to be tough to give a one solution fits all answer. Um, I don't know what the person does at work. You know, number one is can the person, you know, um, does the person have the energy and the strength to do that? Number two is, you know, uh, do you work with um, what, um, what uh, um, should I say, sanitizing, um, should I, uh, health uh, protection um, steps are in place at the church? I mean, if everything is in place and the person can change their clothes and, um, you know, um have their bath and all that um i i and people will not be put at risk i don't see anything being wrong as long as your coming to church does not endanger other people that, that's my answer thank you so much sir um i'm just going to go ahead and move to the next question um that i have here and I'm going to throw this out to our two panelists, both Pastor Bayo Fadugba and Pastor Bayo Adewale. How do we reinvent the church post-COVID-19 while still maintaining the sacredness or originality of spiritual practices like water baptism, Holy Communion, anointing services that... um Pre post COVID, we used to have one on one, um, with touching our members. How do we reinvent the church now that we are transiting online? Um, we have no more walls and, um, <clears throat> how, how do we still maintain the originality of these spiritual practices? I'll start with Pastor Bayo Adewale. Uh, it's a good question, and I will say that uh, that shouldn't be a problem. God is a spirit, and those who worship God also must do in spirit and in truth. Just like so many things we have discovered can be done online. Joe does did, is doing communion online. Anointing can be done online. We may not just touch you, but it's by it's the it's not the physical hand of the man or the woman. It was the invisible hand of God in terms of if you want to do an anointing service, 
uh, you don't need oil, but if you wish you want to use oil, everybody can get an olive oil in their place. For communion, you can get something to represent bread, uh, quick, uh, uh, biscuits or bread. Everybody can get a food juice to represent the wine. Then the same thing with, uh, uh, what other example? Commun- uh, the baptism is the only thing that I believe the church is still trying to figure out to do that work. But hey, baptism can be, it will be done. I mean, about access to swimming pool, things like that. Uh, I see things that, um, um, elsewise, there have been some guidelines about it. That can be done also, man, through Zoom. We don't need to carry everybody. I mean, we can do them in batches in a safe, uh, uh, distancing in the pool. So the idea that everything has to be physical, whether we like it or not, of course we want, we all miss physical fellowship, so to speak. But the truth is, we've learned that even connect, Connection, fellowship also can be, can be enhanced virtually. Look at what we are doing today. Yes, we are not in Dallas, but you can imagine the number of people we are connecting with one another. So this, this is the new normal and we must embrace the new normal. We should, we shouldn't be stuck in the old way. So I believe virtually everything we are doing can still be done. Maybe naming can be done virtually. The pastor will share the exhortation or the leader will share an exhortation and you pronounce the names. We are not there physically, but we're there in the spirit. You can see live people. It's a live, it's, it's a live uh, activity, but virtually online. So I don't think, uh, again, part of what Bio, uh, Pastor Bio said, and I have also said that we must come out of our old ways. We can't do church same old, same old. No, we must think creatively. And we must think based on the opportunities that we have. Technology is our best friend now, and we must use it to the, to to, uh, to leverage to leverage it and to do all we can do. And we are still able to maintain the sacred name, the spirituality of what we are doing. The love, Jesus is still the center. And uh, by the grace of God, I you will be even more effective. You can reach more people, can minister to more people with this. Thank you, Pastor Adewale. Um, over to you, Pastor Fadugba. We want to hear your take on this as well. Um, once again, how do we reinvent the church post COVID-19 while still maintaining the sacredness and originality of spiritual practices like water baptism, holy communion, and anointing service? Well, um, Thank you, Pastor Tony. I, um, I'm going to say that uh, Pastor Bio uh, dealt with um, with uh, a lot of those things. I'm just going to say this. Um, Psalm 107 verse 20, the Bible said, He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Uh, he sent His word. Jesus didn't have to be physically there. The word of God is as potent on a video as it is physically. So we must accept this new normal and we must begin to reinvent church as we've known it. For water baptism, for example, I can say that the same way we do communion service, that everybody, wherever you are, you take your, we've had like three communion services or several, several churches. You know, the pastor stays, you know, where he is, you know, he takes his bread and his wine. Everybody, wherever they are, you know, they are asked to take their bread and their wine and the pastor leads and they follow suit and people get blessed. The same way we should do water baptism. Let the person that is going to be dipped in water go with a their own family member that they live with. The family member does the dipping. The pastor on a video does the coordination remotely and pronounces the blessings over them, asks the right questions. You know, do you believe in Christ? Do you, uh, have you, you know, um, have you given your life to Christ? And all those questions we ask before we dip them in water, you know, and the family member dips them in water, you know, exactly the way we will do it. And when they come out, you know, then the pastor pronounces 
uh, the blessings over them, you know, and all of that remotely. All they need is just a phone and a, a pool or a bathtub that can take the whole body of the fellow that is being baptized. It's a new normal and we've got to accept it. And power will still flow. Healing will still take place. Conviction will still take place. Thank you so much, Pastor Toyin. I really appreciate you, Pastor Fadugba. God bless you, sir. I'm going to take a question from one of our audience. Um, and I'll throw this to the two panelists here. How do we hold ourselves accountable during this era to ensure we assist our weaker brethren from backsliding? Hmm. Pastor Bayo Adewale, over to you, sir. Well, uh, Pastor Bayo dealt with uh, equipping the saints. And the truth is, uh, yes, the in-person uh, was good, but now the new normal is that in person will not be, will not be, uh, as frequent as we think. So everybody again must take personal responsibility. First of all, your spiritual life is your personal responsibility. Church is a place of instruction. It's like a school where things are taught. You go back home after Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you are to lead and grow in the, and you continue to grow. We are disciples in the midst. Disciples are ladder and we keep learning and growing and developing. Of course, and we, we think the in-person helps, of course, because we see you and unfortunately we do a whole lot of eye service where we see the pastor, where we see the leaders, but now that they are not there, so what is your personal responsibility for your spiritual development and, uh, and growth? And the, in time for the uh, backsliding or weaker people. Uh, I also said something which I also believe that yes, we are not, phys- we are not physically available, but uh, virtually we are connected. We are not isolating ourselves and people should not isolate themselves. This is the thing. Is there anyone sick among you? James chapter 5. Is it, let the weaker people, let the people that need help us because that's one thing we don't know how to do well in church. We say, Pastor, you didn't call me. Did you? Wait, you are the one that needs to be called. You are the one that needs something. You don't know what I'm going through. How will I know what you are going through? And say, God reveals it to me. And if God doesn't reveal it to me, hey, Elijah said, Oh, what happened to this woman? Uh, sorry, you don't know. Hey, God is, it's all, all the time God reveals things to people. But the truth is, you need help. You need help in your marriage. You need help spiritually. You need help physically. You need help financially or materially. Please, Pick up the four. The church number office is there. And I believe, and I'm sure people will call you. You are backsliding and you know you may, okay, people may not, you may not know you are backsliding, but people that are in, in your connection, in your circle of influence also will check upon you. They have got at the main body system. Uh, whether you belong to a group or you don't belong, there will be somebody that knows you. I haven't seen by you only for a while. Oh, what's happening to, let me call. And by the time you are also running away from people, you should know that something also is not right. So you need us to reach out. So for people that we know like that, we can invest in them by making sure that they're on a call regularly. We video call. We do FaceTime. We encourage. The encouragement of the church, the must also, we are not losing, this must not be lost. We are not just doing it physically, but now we have technology to help us do it better. You can reach more people. You can encourage more people. You can build more people with technology. And this is how we must live now in a post-COVID, in COVID, that technology is our best friend. And thank God. All those technology have all the things that we need. The camera, the, any phone, anything, you don't need more than your phone. If you have a pattern, go for that. But your phone will be able to help you to do some of these things. Develop your resources online that you don't need to pay for everything, but we must also take personal responsibility. And also, let's be our brother and our sister's keeper. Don't forget your neighbor. That's what Jesus tells us in Luke chapter. Go and do like, go and do likewise. 
and you don't have to do likewise physically. You can do likewise in the uh, virtually. You want to all the gross, you want to help people with gross, all them grocery people will yeah. drop it off there. There are different different uh companies that do all those drop off uh different like organizations that can do drop off and without sin and the food, the groceries, whatever can be delivered to the person. So please let's just think positive. Let's think uh, technology now and embrace it. It's our new friend. Amen. 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 Thank you so, so very much, Pastor Adewale, Pastor Fadiba, for the awesome, awesome exposition. Um, thank you for the wisdom. Thank you for the guidance. Um, huge thank you also to all of our audience. We really appreciate you. Thank you for your participation. The Lord God Almighty will bless you. I pray that God will give us all the much needed wisdom um, to use as we um, continue to advance his kingdom here on earth in the name of Jesus. For as many that have, have, have joined us online, please like the video, share it. Let everyone be blessed through it. And the Lord will continue to use each and every one of us to move his work forward in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. Appreciate you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you too.